This podcast is brought to you by Irish supplement company Revive Active. As GA training has returned for all adults, Revive Active's Zest Active aims to support your energy, immune system and muscle function, while their joint complex aims to support your cartilage, connective tissue and bones. This makes them the ideal supplements for the GA season ahead. As always, you can get 10% off all products on reviveactive.com using the code BACKDOORGA10. Delighted to be joined by Offaly Senior Ben Kennedy. Ben, you must be delighted with the way Offaly are going, um, top of Division 2A and looking good for promotion at the minute. Um, yeah, yeah, just, uh, just happy to be back, to be honest, really. Um, especially with, as I was saying, the weather it is there now, it's great to be actually heard in the summer. Um, after having inter-county hurling and kind of in the depths of coming into winter, winter there last year, but yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's good to be kind of back now, and and especially when you're when you're winning and you're doing well in the games, but um, it makes it a little bit a little bit more enjoyable to be back. Do you think, as a whole, Michael Fenley now having a second year under you has helped massively? Because I suppose last year, like with the way COVID was coming, it was very hard for a manager in his first year. Um, definitely, and like, I, I'd say it probably goes for um, uh, most of the teams that got new managers uh, uh, last year that might have struggled underneath them, um, or maybe it took a while to kind of get the grips with them. But um, yeah, definitely the, the the bit of the break kind of got a bit more uh, work underneath us, you know, individually and stuff. So it definitely definitely kind of helped a bit, um, uh, which you can kind of see now it, it has. Absolutely, and the boost to Shane Laurie coming on board. What was your reaction like to that as players? Yeah, it was a, a shock, really. Um, I suppose for us, it's not really going to be. He's not really going to have any direct impact with us as a, a as a senior squad. Um, but I think it was more uh, as a county, it, it, it gave a nice little boost to uh, a lot of uh, supporters supporters of Offaly GA, just kind of showing that there, you know, someone like him is is willing to. He put his own kind of funding and his own kind of um, backing into it. You know, it gives a nice little boost to the county. All right. You re- and your results so far, um, it must it must be great because I suppose you have suffered setbacks as players, but like your results now against Carlo and Mead, like and Kerry as well, they've been huge results and outstanding performances in some games. Yeah, it's look, it's, it's it's great. It's great to be winning games, you know, whether you win them by ten pints or a pint, it's just it's 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 great to just be getting uh, coming out with <coughs> coming out with a victory, especially after kind of the last couple of years we we've been kind of unlucky um in, in certain games. Um uh, mostly just down to our own our own doing. So um to kind of have a nice little run is, is good. But like that we're just just taking every game as it comes really. That's that's all you can do and uh just try to focus on on each one. So the kind of the week the the weekend now off is is a nice little kind of break mentally anyways what's the biggest change do you feel now to when you were losing to back to winning ways now um it's hard to really know i think uh, uh probably just a bit more belief in ourselves really and um it's probably off to a good start you know like like most teams um when you kind of lose your first game it can be a bit a bit, a bit disheartening especially after having a long layoff uh, of the couple of months, so probably getting our first win, um, give us a little bit more momentum. Um, so that's definitely after helping us. And then I suppose when you get another one and another one, then your momentum kind of keeps going. Much like maybe Limerick kind of losing against uh, against Hip there, and then losing against Waterford. You know, two games and a trot is kind of hard. Or or kind of even Antrim getting a good win over Clare, it kind of gives them a good little boost in their first game back. Um, while if you lose like Clare did, it could you know neg- negatively affect them. Um, which it may or may not have. So probably just the win, really, at the start of it all, it, it was the big factor. And a lot of youngsters seem to be coming through. Even Brian Dignan there and Liam Langton have really been given some outstanding performances. And I suppose that bit of youth sprinkled in with the confidence getting from youngsters coming in must definitely help the squad. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
like I never would have considered myself old, but you see lads coming on then there a bit younger, you're like, Chase, I feel old when they're in there. Um, but yeah, it's just that it's just that confidence and the buzz around you get off them as as individuals. Like uh it's it, it definitely helps. You know, you can you, it's not gonna bring down a camp anyway, it's only gonna kind of make it better. So definitely the 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 youth has 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 definitely helped anyway, yeah. And as you mentioned there, it's it's been a great start for you. Um but I suppose you won't be taking your eye off the ball because after coming up short in the Christie ring last year, that's probably your main focus to get back up to the Joe Martona. Yeah, yeah, it, it would be our focus. I think at the moment it's just taken, we're in the league now, so it's just taken every game. We haven't been looking too far to anything um, or looking past any teams, and um, especially the teams we've played and, and especially what's coming up. So we're just taking every game as it comes really and, and just focusing on that and, and when the league is finished with then we can park that and start kind of focusing on, on, on the Chris Ring um, and, you know, doing our best in that as we can. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned there about the summer and winter head and off air. It, it must be a lot more enjoyable to be playing actually the league in good conditions for once. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, a few of us were only saying when our first training came back that... Uh, our touch was nearly better now than what it was when we came back last year and we came off the back end of club championship. Um, so it just goes to show what's like to hurling a bit of nicer weather. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely, especially after having you know, your four months there where you're on your own. And the last thing you want to do then is kind of come back into dark evenings and, and early mornings on a weekend or rain and stuff like that. So when it's weather's out nice, it's, it feels like a bit more of kind of crack around the place and a bit more enjoyable. But it definitely helps anyway, yeah. And your own kind of position as which I suppose you would have started off cornerback and you've kind of moved out to centre half back in the last year or two. How have you found that? Oh well I like being out of cornerback anyways. <laughs> so you get a little bit more freedom out, out centre back. But yeah, just uh it, it just so happened one of our, our centre back last year just he didn't uh commit this year just for the reasons and I just kinda of ended up there really and one of our couple of our trainings and it's kind of been going well there now. So I just I'd, if if they put me back cornerback, I I won't mind. If they put me in goals, I won't mind. Or up the other end of the field, it'll just bother me as long as I'm playing. But uh, I won't be playing anyways. Being on the team, no matter what. So yeah, it's a bit of a change. Or you kind of get to hurl a hurl a little bit more. You don't have to focus too much on on man marking as much. But yeah, no, it's a bit more enjoyable, Ari. Yeah, and as you mentioned, they uh, you have the week off now, and then two more games to play. Is it badly needed at this stage, I suppose, because we've seen a lot of players are picking up injuries straight away, which is to be expected, really. Yeah, no, the week break is uh, it's definitely needed. Like, uh, if it's not, if you're not picking up kind of muscle injuries, it's it's maybe like a little bang here from a hurl or, or small little niggles that could take a couple of days to kind of wear off. And you don't want them kind of coming into training and then on a, on a Friday leading up to the match. And so the week, the week off definitely is a big help. I know we got caught a couple of years ago where we actually got four games in a row and come that fourth game, uh, we were just dead, you know, but our training leading up to us wasn't great. And, um, I think afterwards they, they, they stopped doing that then and they gave teams that week break that time. So no, it's definitely, it's definitely a big help, but it's more mentally, you kind of mentally get to switch off like three weeks, three big games every weekend is, is it's a lot to kind of keep focusing on. So it's nice to get a, a clear head for a weekend anyways. And what do you, what would awfully be hoping now to get out of the last two games in this league campaign? Um, first and foremost, really, it's a performance. Um, and I think uh, if when if the win comes along with that, it comes along with. It. But if you, once you can kind of get a good performance, you 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 know, and you perform to the best you can, you, you should be getting a win anyways. Um, much like every other team, if they perform to the hundred percent, they day can they'll, they'll get a win. But it's just making sure we get two strong performances out of this and, and, and that we finish strong and and then have something to build on really um for the Christy Ring afterwards. Uh, but yeah it's just just getting a, a performance a good performance and performing to how we can really. Well Ben best of luck for the rest of the league and championship and uh thanks a million for your time. <laughs> Joined by former Limit senior earlier Mark Foley and just to look ahead to the league match that was cancelled last weekend between Kilkenny and Wexford and to just touch on the latest hurling news but Mark, what did you think last weekend I suppose when we heard Brian Lohan Brian Lohan's comments about the close contact and then Claire G.A. come out and defend him and then 
Wexford kind of came out and said the complete opposite. It's it's very hard to know what to make of it. Yeah. Um, well, I, I suppose, first of all, it would be difficult to, to see how two declared players were named as as contacts, close contacts or, or, or otherwise. So that, that was a very, very difficult one to fathom. And I suppose the big question is who, who was responsible for that? Um, and how did they come about the decision to name those two players? So I think I think that's still rumbling on. I don't think there's anything definitive on that. So um, it would be, uh, I can fully understand how Brian Lawn was, 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 was very disappointed, I suppose, and angry um, as a result of that. Um, because like, you know, you're led to believe at this stage like that it's 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 very difficult to pick um, COVID up outdoors and I suppose that's the only that's the only environment really where any of the Clare players would have come across um, the Wexford players so look it's it's um, there seems to be a fallout since from it and um, there certainly would be a difference of opinion between Wexford and Clare at the moment um, and that's unfortunate like because um, you know it, it's it's not a place we want to be in a, at this stage having only just gotten back in the field after a, a long a long break since last year. So look, I just hope the whole thing is cleared up really and that everyone can get back to just concentrating on what everyone really wants to see, which is the hurling on the field. Yeah, and I, like all that's going on with Clare now, like um it's it's well documented at this stage with the county board and everything. I'm sure Brian Owen's trying to block his players away from it, but it's like as you were saying there, it doesn't look uh, great. And like, yeah. how, how do they block out all that noise? Because it's when, everywhere. You you can't at this stage, Paul. You can't you can't block it out. Um, all you can do is deal with it as as as, as best you can. But the 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 um, I suppose the the idea of blocking it out is 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 something that you can't um you can't do at this stage. It's just gone too big. It's gone outside of clear. Um, it's a national story now and it's something that's been rumbling on to be fair for a couple of years now I suppose um, probably was kept in house a fair to a fair degree last year but it's definitely spilled out into the national um, scene at this stage and um, certainly everyone is aware of it at this stage and uh, it would be um, near now impossible just to, um, to, to to block it out but I suppose all you can do uh, from a management perspective at that stage is just talk to the players about it and deal with it and try to um, deflect as much of uh, of it as possible but but certainly at this stage it's um it's something that hasn't gone away and it seems to be a a big problem for Claire really and um I suppose you know you have the car loan thing and you have um I suppose maybe the fact that uh, to 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 be fair about it that there was a fair degree of expectation um after Claire won the All Ireland there with with David Fitzgerald what is it now seven years eight years ago now is it um and that really hasn't been realised that potential I suppose really and um I suppose there's a lot of frustration and um you know there's a couple of big personalities involved there as well like which are you know which um. I suppose the fact that they're going completely opposite sides of the fence, it really kind of adds to the fact that um, the team keeps rumbling on. Like So from a clear perspective, I just think it's important for them to, to again, uh, they got a good win against Leach last weekend, to just drive on and, um, and to uh, get another win on the board as soon as possible. And what you find with these things, and I know because, Jeepers, we were in we were in the same situation ourselves when I was playing, there was a lot of expectation. And I suppose the main reason why we didn't win all Ireland's and Munster Championship, and that is is a very simple reason was that we just weren't good enough, and we were coming up against very good teams at the time. But sometimes people don't accept that, and they look for deeper reasons. And um, I think um, certainly um, Clare at the moment, um, bit of pressure on. Um, and again, the spotlight seems to be on them. But I think at this stage, the best way to deal with that, and the best way to take that. Um, out of the equation is by winning matches and all of a sudden people are talking about what happens on the field then. Yeah, it, it is. And you mentioned the expectation there and everything being heard and I suppose the one thing for them, they do have some players to welcome back but I, I presume you'd be familiar enough with Carroll Owen. Are the facilities not good enough because we've seen John Conlon come out and he's criticised them as well. Well, I suppose, uh, look, uh, again, I'm not going to be going down, <laughs> going down the road of criticising players' um, um, facilities or anything like that, but all you can say is what you hear. And uh, some of the players are just saying it's not fit for purpose in terms of a kind of a, um, a training centre for an elite intercounty team at this stage, which is 
basically, I suppose, in all, in, in, in all terms, bar the monetary side of things, you're expecting professional standards, really. So I suppose, based on what you're hearing from from the hurling fraternity, um, I think the footballers are happy enough with it. But the, I, I think the big problem, or the, one of the bigger problems with, with Carlo and seems to be the pitch. And uh, they don't seem to be happy with it anyway, the surface there. So, um, you know, that's something I think that Claire will have to sort out for, for themselves. And I think as a, as a hurling community, we all just hope that, you know, even though it would be a great rivalry between Clare and Limerick, you'd all hope that, um, you know, just Clare, Clare get their house in order because, um, you know, I think it's very important, you know, without being patronising that all the hurling counties that are more or less near the top table or at the top table that they, they need to be competing to make the championship as vibrant as possible and as, as viable as possible going forward, you know, because I suppose Kilkenny were excellent there for a number of years, but probably won all Ireland's with very little opposition. So I think the um, the championship is just a little bit better when you have you know a, a, a wide range of teams operating at that level with a decent chance of success. But I mean, just going back to your to, to your point again in terms of expectation, I think that expectation is kind of gone now from Clare, to be fair. I think definitely there is a feeling there that if they do get their house in order and play, kind of play to the limit of their potential that they're uh, they're very very dangerous but i don't think the i don't think the expectation is there now that was there maybe three and four years ago um where they were expected kind of to really kick on and win a second all Ireland and, and maybe a third after that but um again um you know it's um it's um it's very important i think um that clear um it's a huge game for them against Watt from the first round of the muster championship and i think the league at this stage for for, for clear is just about building confidence and maybe settling on a team and I think that's a huge match for them then. And if they can get over that, you know, the, the, the lift to confidence would be would be absolutely huge. One big positive for Antrim now, especially being the only team from the North in Division 1 Hurling, um, they're going to get to have 500 spectators at uh, one of the Division 1 games, which is huge, really. Yeah, that's the, and, and in fairness, and the Antrim crowd are, are, are very, very passionate up there. Um and just going back to 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 league games there we, we had years ago you know the the Wolfen Casement Park at the time, um really really passionate crowd got behind their team and uh, you know I think the, the matches are being played at home in Corrigan Park in Belfast which is which is a club grounds really it's like I think you St John's club club grounds but um that um really kind of helps you know when you have a crowd of five hundred in a place like that that can kind of really lift the home team if they, if they get a bit of a momentum. It's different to like in a big stadium where you're 500, where they can nearly be lost. But um, in a stadium or a, or a grounds like that, I think 500 can make a difference. And I think, yeah, Antrim are doing very well at the moment. Obviously, they had the first result against Clare, which was fantastic for them. And they were competitive against Kilkenny, even though they were kind of um, put to the sword by Dublin again last weekend. Um, and, and I suppose didn't really didn't really um worry Dublin coming come, coming down the home stretch but certainly at home they're going to be um they're, they're they're going to be a big threat especially with the with the fans back in the uh, in in the ground so yeah it'll give them that little kick again and obviously you know you, you listen to um to, to to guys on about the likes of years ago with Liverpool playing European Cup matches and Hanson and these guys used to say like the first thing that do did try to do was to silence the crowd. And I think that's very, very um that's very um telling or it's very suitable when you when you consider Antrim above and above in Belfast. I think momentum is everything. And obviously like five hundred or five thousand doesn't really matter if you're being beaten early on. But if you do get a start, uh, get a good momentum going. I think the, the 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 few people inside the grounds will really make them make them make themselves heard and I think will spur Antrim on. To, um, to, to, to really kick on. So, yeah, it's, I think it's a big thing for them. Just before, Mark, we get into the Kilkenny-Wexford game, um, Limerick haven't lost two on his trot now. Do you think there's a bit of indiscipline creeping into their team now? Uh, probably, yeah. I th- I th- yeah. That would be a fair comment, I think. And, and, look, and look, I'm only saying that, and I'm sure that the players themselves have addressed it. Um, and, <laughs> again, I think a lot of the stuff, to be fair, um, they probably would have addressed it beforehand. I mean, they're Ireland champions. It's their second title in three years. There's obviously players having a go at them, and and, and they reacted. So, and you know, I think if you're to learn that lesson, I think now is the time to learn it, and now is the time, you know, to 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 rectify that. So, I think yeah, that certainly is a is an element of um of things that um 
um, has happened this year and uh, I think they'll be ready for it come the championship but certainly a bit of indiscipline there last weekend and uh, I think to be fair a lot of it was kind of reactionary stuff um, but um, I think yeah that, that's that's good lesson to be learned um, at this stage of the year with five weeks to go to the championship and it's, I'm sure that'll be ironed out come uh, come the first round of the championship against Cork Yeah definitely be interesting to see but the one game now this weekend uh, Wexford and Kilkenny um I suppose it's going to be hard to know what Wexford team is going to be because we don't know who are the COVID cases or the close contacts. Yeah, I think that's that's tomorrow as well as that. I think before we have any clarity really on who's available and and and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I, I suppose difficult to get a read on what's going to happen in that game until we see the teams. But uh, you know, I think it, very unfortunate the match was called called off last weekend, but. Great again that it's on this weekend with no hurling match. At least we'll have a hurling match to watch anyway, which is brilliant altogether. So yeah, kind of looking forward to that game now because it's the only game on as such uh, this weekend. It's mostly football. So really looking forward to that. And look, I suppose Wexford would be favourites to beat Leash in the, in the championship. So I think Kilkenny will be waiting for them then in the Leinster semi-final, I think, after that, isn't it? So um, yeah, just very, very interesting to see how that goes. So it'll be... Um, Again, depending on what team Wexford put out. I'd like to see Wexford put out a very strong team. I think that, you know, Davy has kind of chopped and changed a bit and, 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 and rotated players there throughout the league. But I think if, uh, you know, Wexford can put out their best team, I think they have a really important forward division if they go if if, if, if they go um, and mix it up a little bit and kind of mix the, the short ball with the long stuff and, and, and that kind of thing and just, uh, I suppose, improving their decision-making. I think they're, they're, they're well capable of ca- causing... Uh, Kilkenny lots of butter and again looking forward to seeing Kilkenny as well what kind of a team they'll put out um, impressed enough with James Bergen there I think he's he's done very well so far um, and again there's a number of players there who are really kind of finding their feet the likes of Richie Reid there uh, Park Walsh is back in centre back I think he'll do very well there and uh, yeah the, the, you know obviously Adrian Mullen every game he gets his, um, is a huge bonus and he'll improve so yeah, I think Kilkenny are, are going fairly well and I think um, you know they're going to be there, thereabouts um, come the championship and I'd be very surprised if they didn't get to at least an All-Ireland semi-final. And I suppose with Wexford, like, I think a player we'd all like to really see tear it up this year is Conor MacDonald. Maybe he hasn't got the supply of ball in the past. If you're looking at that Wexford team, does he have to be 14? But like, I suppose when you're full forward in that Wexford team, you don't always get the ball you want then, so it's kind of very hard to know where to play him. Yeah, look, uh, I suppose to be fair to Davy, like, and, and I've said this here before, like, is, is a lot of what Davy does, like whatever kind of system he plays, a lot of it is just about getting men behind the ball and counter-attacking. That's, that seems to be a lot of the, um, the D- Davy's um, um, way of doing things, and it, it, it's something similar with Six Mile Bridge as well. No, he does... Um, I suppose the big thing about Wexford is that um, they get so many men behind the ball and break at such speed. Um, it's it's difficult at times for them to kind of uh, have a, a definite outlet where they can say, right, we'll put the ball into 2v2 or 3v3. It's nearly always 2v3 or 1v2, that kind of a thing. So I think having said that, I think if they, if, if they, um, if they, maybe were a little bit more direct and what I say about direct is not just lumping the ball on top of Conor, Conor McDonald, but just maybe trying to maybe match up the numbers inside a little bit better I think they'd be more of a threat um, scoring wise especially goal scoring wise because um, like they have Lee Chin they have Conor McDonald they have Rory O'Connor they have um, who has said they have Jack O'Connor there sometimes he's middle of the field I think he's capable of playing in the forwards as well Um who else do they have then? They have the likes of Paul. Like they've good forwards. Paul Morris as well. They're good forwards. And if uh, and like most of them are able to win their own ball. So sometimes I think maybe not just be very agricultural about it and start lumping the ball in the square. But I think if they work the ball into maybe the um, the sixty five or that way and just put the ball in front of Connor McDonald if there's no covering defender. I think that uh, certainly he's capable of doing a lot of damage. Haven't seen a whole lot of him being honest playing any other position bare full forward, to be honest about it. Any time I've seen him play, it's kind of number 14, even with the club matches there last year, uh, Nevena, like in the year before, it seems to be out around 14 all the time. Maybe he could do a job um, centre forward, I don't know, but I think edge of the square, he's very dangerous, but it's, it's definitely um, it's definitely something that Wexford probably need to look at is the service into him and maybe trying to get him on the ball a little bit more. Now, I know there is this there is this outlook at the moment and this kind of philosophy that if you give the ball in any way long to a full forward that you're giving possession away. A lot of the coaches are 
are, are obsessed with holding on to possession and maybe that's a reason why he hasn't been given the service he has but I think you know if they mix it up a little bit I think they could be um, they could add another string to their bow Yeah and the one big thing I suppose for Wexford to kind of get back to the level they're at um, we nearly mentioned it last week it's the free taking and I suppose that's probably going to be interesting to see who's on the freeze now for them this weekend. And again, I don't know, I'll be honest, I suppose I, they, 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 they definitely, no, they have been so meticulous, they'll definitely have work, worked in a, in training. Um, again, you go back to Lee Chin and people will say, you know, Lee Chin is the best free taker. Lee Chin had an absolutely outstanding day of the year. They won the Leinster final there against Kilkenny um, all of, is it two years ago now? And uh, But he hasn't had anything like that success rate since. And, uh, you know, Rory O'Connor has taken them. Rory O'Connor is, you know, probably not a 9 out of 10 free taker either. Like, so it's something that they have to address and just, I think, settle on a free taker at this stage and uh, just fill him with confidence and uh, really um, try to nail that 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 problem for, for the rest of the year. Yeah, and with Kenny as well, as you were saying, um, the one thing is this year, like James Bergen's been impressive. Adrian Mullins getting action back. Owen Cody has been impressive. So... I suppose the issue has been for them who's going to support TJ and it's positive signs so far anyways. Definitely, yeah. And all these guys um, have a bit of pace as well. Like So um, that's that's very important to, when you consider TJ. Like, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of miles up and he doesn't need to be doing the heavy lifting all the time. But, um, you know, I haven't said that. Like, if you contrast Wexford and Kilkenny, like in terms of free taking, like TJ is going to probably get 9 out of 10 at a very, at a minimum, probably 10 out of 10. From wherever he takes him in the field, he's an absolutely outstanding free taker, and, and that's not even to mention what he what he brings from play, both in terms of scores, and his assists as well are off the charts too. So he's a real, real team player. So an outstanding player, TJ, obviously, and uh, and obviously it's it's nice to see that he's getting a bit of support. I saw James Bergen actually a couple of years ago in the in the intermediate for the junior club final for Connie Shamrocks. And I thought he'd something to offer. And I was asking a few of the lads from Kilkenny about him. And they said, you know, that he was actually a young enough player. So I'm not surprised he's made a step up, like, because he looked very dangerous that night. And just like every, you know, good forward in Kilkenny, no matter what way the ball comes in, he's able to deal with it. Adrian Mullen, obviously, an outstanding talent, um, was very, very um, unfortunate there to suffer the dreaded cruciate injury and was really... um, making a huge impression for the for, for the short time he, the, since he burst on the intercounty scene. So look, if they can really get him motoring again this year, it'll be fantastic. And on Cody again, just really coming into it last year, I suppose. So it's a big year for, for him to really step up as well. But of course, there would be there would be question marks about Kilkenny in the defence. Um, Parik Walsh is in at centre-back. I think that's his probably best position at this stage. Good in the air, good to read it. Left and right, very, very good player. Connor Brown, not so sure about Connor. Like, Connor's a fine athlete. Um and he really offers a lot to Kilkenny. T tough in terms of um you know he'll shy away from nothing and you know given the fact he's small in stature, he um he 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 makes up for it with a lot of tenacity and determination and that. So, but I'm not so sure he's a half back. Um and it'll just be interesting to see how the rest of their backs get on as well. I'm very impressed with Hugh Lawler. To be fair, I think he was. I saw the match against Dublin. Very very impressive against Dublin. Didn't put a foot foot wrong all day long. And uh, just the makeup of, of their whole defence, it'll it, it'll just be interesting. Um, and I suppose they'll come up, they'll come across bigger tests come the championship, and it'll just be interesting to see will they will they be able to get over those tests. Of course, Richie Hogan is still back in the panel as well, and I think this is a big year for Richie because uh, you know obviously there's not a whole lot of time. I mean, Richie's coming coming probably into into the the winter of his career now, so I think if Richie's back and stay right, I still think he's a hell of a lot to offer. Like because Richie like. He's, a, he, he's an absolutely um, fantastic pair of hands, like left and right, over the shoulder, whatever way he gets it. He's very, very skillful. I think he was probably out of position last year to play them in their own full forward against against Waterford. Sometimes he was isolated there. I don't think you need Richie to be fulfilling that role at this stage of his career, but I think anywhere out around that middle third, even middle of the field, or maybe even centre forward, drifting around and getting onto ball, I still think he can do a lot of damage just by using his head. I think if they can get the best out of Richie and that he can stay injury free this year, I think he's going to be a big player for them because um, you know he'll definitely be looking to um, to um, really sign off on a on a very high note. I think. And who can you see coming out on top here, Mark? Uh, I suppose based on the fact like that, that there's been uncertainty with Wexford, we don't know where, uh, anything in relation to training, how's that gone in that way, I'll give the, the vote to Kilkenny and obviously they're at home as well, so I think yeah, Kilkenny, relatively impressive um, against Dublin, 
and uh, obviously Antrim causing big trouble with goals and that and that's something like that that question mark won't go away until maybe you've seen him against better opposition um, there are you know I suppose lingering doubts about what Kilkenny but I'd, I'd expect him to get over the line yeah it'll definitely be interesting to see um, but that's the only hurling game uh, in Division 1 this weekend um, that's all we'll be looking forward to in the hurling world but